Hi everybody, this is going to be a video where I show some records that I've played for the first time and uh, something that I haven't done in a while. I'd like to try to do this a little more often, but for now, uh, we'll stick with these titles. I don't have too many, but uh, there's some different stuff here. So I'm going to start with an album that's probably going to be a surprise to a lot of people, and it's an album from 2010, and it's this one by the Black Keys Brothers, which I actually got from my nephew who uh, has been suggesting that I give this a listen, and he recommended it to me. And uh, I don't know if this really counts as an official review, because this is a double album, and uh, I've only played the first record, um, but I, I, I like the first record so much that I'm actually excited to come here and talk about it. So uh, it's not really an official uh, full kind of review of the album or anything, just giving you my impressions of the first disc. Really like the first disc. Uh, it was my kind of sound, you know, um, it just goes to show, you know, you can find things that you really like. Uh, don't really go actively looking for newer things like this, but I um, had a very commercial kind of sound. I think that kind of like appealed to me and I think it kind of draws different opinions from people who like the Black Keys. A lot of people really don't uh, feel this was really that good of an album. A lot of people really think it was a praiseworthy album. But what hit me was, as I'm listening to this uh, album, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like letting it play and I'm getting into it and enjoying it. But, you know, it's rare that one track hits you and you say to yourself, wow, you know, you stop in your tracks and say, I really like that song. You know, it, it can be pleasant, the album. But then when you hear one track that really makes you take notice, it's uh, really something else. There's one here called uh, The Only One. That was my favorite song on, on the first disc. The only one really appealed to me. So anyway, I want to give this another listen. Not really fair to do half an album, but I'm judge. I'm basically commenting on the first disc that I spun, okay? That I spun, spun, spinned. So uh, now we go for something different. This is a, an oldies album from the '50s. It's called the Fabulous Cadillacs. Um, really like that cover. Well, I'm hanging out in the car. Cadillacs are the band that did that 50s hit called Speedo, which is the first song on side two here, and I really love that song. That, that I knew I was going to like. But uh, I took a chance because uh, the rest of this album, you know, I hadn't heard before, and it's more of, of the same kind of sound. I like the sound of, of the group. I like the way they sing. Uh, nothing on the rest of it, what I say, really stood out as, oh, what a, what a great classic track. But I don't regret buying this album, and it was a nice listen when you're in the mood for 50s stuff. So, uh, uh, it kind of like uh, holds up for me, and of course, this is an album that I'll keep, and I'll play it from here, here, here and there when I uh, I'm in the mood for fifties. So that was happy. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put my glasses on for this, I think. Uh, Frank Sinatra. I uh, bought a lot of Sinatra albums, um, playing some here and there. Uh, playing some EPs I've gotten and singles, but here's an album that I just pulled at random. It's, a, I guess, a later album. It's this album here called Cycles, uh, which I didn't think it was so good after the first uh, kickoff. It got into uh, Rain in My Heart, From Both Sides Now, Little Green Apples. I was I was getting into the album, and I liked the, the songs. As it went on, I kind of got a little, uh, I don't know, just... Didn't really get bowled over by it. it. wasn't terrible or anything like that, but just seemed kind of ordinary, the rest of it, to me. Didn't really uh, grab me much, this particular album. Okay, uh, let's see. Here's an album. Cherie Curry of The Runaways. I mean, uh, it's a pretty interesting cover, <laughs> to say the least. But um, I'm a fan of Joan Jett and The Runaways, and I, you know, I've been trying to pretty much collect anything that they've done. I've never really thought much of, of uh, Cherie Curry as a vocalist. I, I much prefer when Joan Jett took over in the band and she started singing after Cherie left. Uh, figured I'd give this a try. To tell you the truth, I really didn't like this album at all. Didn't like any songs on this album, but it's not so much the songs. I, I just don't think that uh, she's really a very good singer. Now, a lot of people would say, well, Joan Jett's not exactly Barbara Streisand, you know. No, no, of course not, but she's Joan Jett's a rocker, and she sounds good to me as a hardcore rocker. Uh, I don't know. I just think that Cherie Curry 
it, somebody that's trying to sing a little too hard. I don't know. It just didn't grab me. You know, I'll keep this because it's a great cover, but also because uh, it, it fits in the Runaways solo collection. So I'm not going to get rid of it. But I, I'll never play this album again. I really disliked it that much. So, okay, uh, let's get something better. <laughs> The Fabulous Johnny Cash. What can you say? Great album. And uh, this one is great. I just uh, started getting into Johnny Cash uh, and playing some of his albums. Played this one all the way through and loved it. Um, I mean, it's almost, I'm guessing, not being a real Cash expert, that, you know, it almost goes without saying that, you know, this is there's enough said about this album. I mean, what can you say? It's good all the way through. Uh, just everything on here. I mean, uh, I, I'm not going to single out any of the tracks. I don't really, you know find one that's that stands out they're just appealing all the way through i like the whole thing okay uh, i picked this up at a flea market it's a double record set the best of scott joplin and um i actually uh, picked this up because i like the movie the sting you know and the sting uses ragtime music in it so uh i figured let me get it would think this was a dollar so for a dollar for a double album set uh, it's either the flea market or a Goodwill, I don't remember where, but I picked it up for like a buck and uh, started playing it and uh, got through the first couple of sides I couldn't take anymore. Uh, quite frankly, I, I like the rag music uh, from The Sting, and because I have the soundtrack album of The Sting, I think I'm going to allow that to stand as far as how far I go with ragtime. I don't need any more. Uh, here's an album by Peggy Lee. I don't know if it's a first album or not. Uh, I enjoyed the record. I enjoyed the album. The problem is the sound quality was horrendous, and I thought it might be that I got a bad copy until I did some internet searching and realized that this particular album just is a terrible pressing period. Nothing you can really do about it. It's going to sound awful no matter what copy you have. So that made me feel better about the quality. But I enjoyed it, and I have more Peggy Lee that I have to listen to. This was my first real introduction, and if this is any indication, I'm going to enjoy the rest. Okay, we have uh, an album here. Don't Say Nothing Bad About the Cookies by The Cookies. Now, this is one of those risk albums you take. A lot of albums uh, I find from the 50s that... Uh, Maybe there's a group that did one popular song, like I just did the Cadillacs with Speedo. And, uh, you know, you, you like the one song, but the rest are all turkeys, you know. That was the case, sort of, with this one. I mean, uh, I think this went a little too far. I mean, I, I love the songs that they do here, like uh, Don't Say Nothing Bad About My Baby's a great song. And uh, they do the song Chains, that was covered by the Beatles later, uh, uh, Goffin and King song. And uh, there's a lot of songs on this album. I haven't, I haven't counted them up, but there are a lot of songs. And once you play them, and you're going through them over and over and over, you start feeling like you're hearing the same kind of thing. It's the same formula over and over again. Really wears thin after like uh, three or four songs. And that's really what I've, I've found here. Uh, not unpleasant by any means, just kind of monotonous, same old thing. I, I'm happy with uh, Chains and Don't Say Nothing Bad About My Baby. You know, it's good enough for me right now. I've uh, been buying some Herb Alpert albums, and I picked one to play, and it was this one, The Lonely Bull, which is, I didn't know at the time I played it, I found that afterwards, it's his first album, so that was good uh, timing, and uh, another album I enjoyed, uh, I like the sound of Herb Alpert, this song, uh, especially the first track right off the bat, uh, I liked, which is The Lonely Bull, I mean, uh, right away that appealed to me, and then it just stayed through the whole album really enjoyed the whole thing and that's all i have uh well, i want to say one thing here if anybody's still listening at this point um my last couple of videos i don't know what's going on i made two videos about a week ago and uh you know they give you the option of three thumbnail choices to pick to pick the picture that you want and i picked a picture and neither one of the ones i picked none of the three that they gave me popped up you know they give you three options and you pick from the three the two that showed up on the last two videos were a fourth option that I never even got offered. In other words, it seems to me that YouTube now, at least in those two videos, took the opportunity and the liberty just of picking whatever they wanted, any anything. I, it wasn't even something I chose. So I don't know what I'm going to get as a, as a you know a thumbnail pick for this video. 
And uh, I did find out that I can do custom thumbnails, which I'm going to try to concentrate more on. So if anybody watching these words here at the end has had this experience and can relate, can tell me what they did about this. I really appreciate it because uh, I'm going to have to figure out more how to utilize the thumbnail thing. I mean, I did whatever's involved, I mean, to get the ability. The ability is there. It's just that I haven't been able yet to figure out how to take a picture uh, and have it uploaded. I'd like, I prefer to, to take a picture of a frame from the actual video. You know, I don't want to take, I see some people have side pictures of records and things. I'd rather try to take just a picture right from the video. All right, anyway, have a good day, everybody. Take care.